If you are a new or experienced photographer and feel overwhelmed by your editing process, then this video is for you. I'm going to share five things that you can start doing to improve your photo editing today. It all starts with light and how you capture your images in that light. We have backlight, front light, side light, open shade, indoor light, mixed indoor light, ambient light, flash, continuous light, so many different types. So you need to figure out how to use your camera in manual to achieve the type of look you want in each type of light. Decide if there are certain types of light that you prefer and then create experiences in your business to cater to those. So for example, if you do those soft, glowy, golden hour type portraits and your clients come to expect it, then you'll want to make sure that you can cater to that. However, if you are a wedding photographer, you need to be able to shoot in all the different lighting situations regardless of what is your favorite because you will be put in those situations no matter what, sometime. Okay, step two, figure out what styles you are drawn to and how you can kind of create your own path. If you want to improve your editing, you're going to have to get consistent in those styles. Here's some images from the same wedding edited in different styles. Each style is wonderful, however, they don't really go well together. Remember that once you get a consistent style, you will be sought after and recognized by clients, vendors, planners, editors, and get published because they know what to expect from you and your style. So have fun and do some research. Have some, you know, artistic time to create like a Pinterest board and figure out what you're drawn to, not necessarily in your photography niche. In fact, I would suggest not looking at, if you're a wedding photographer, don't go look at all the wedding photos. Go look at artwork and various landscapes and all sorts of things that you can kind of start to narrow down what you are drawn to. This helps to focus on you as a person, which can translate into your photography and all the other elements of your business. I'm gonna talk about this more in a future video, but this can kind of get you started and get your wheels turning. Step three is get familiar with the Lightroom tools that will really help you. Once you get comfortable in Lightroom, you'll become a really efficient editor and you'll save so much time. On average, if you're booking a regular amount of weddings, 15 to 25-ish, something like that, it can take you, you know, 100 plus, 200 even hours to edit all your weddings during the year. Even if you could cut that time in half, think of what you could do in the time that you've saved in other areas of your business or even just take time off. There are certain tools in Lightroom that are the workhorses. You need them in every photo. They have to be done, exposure, curve, something like that. And there are just areas of Lightroom that you need to use, the different modules, develop, the library, global adjustments, basic adjustments, metadata filters, the HSL panel. These are just different areas that you probably should know a little bit about how they work. I will be sharing a lot about what Lightroom has to offer in future videos, but you can start looking around and figuring out what you like to use, what you don't, what you don't understand, what you need to figure out, like learning what the histogram does, how to isolate groups of photos, what is syncing, do you need to use all the different areas of the develop module, and what keyboard shortcuts are going to help you. Okay. So Step four, and you're gonna be like, yes, duh, she's gonna talk about presets because she created presets, and yes, I did. So I am a preset advocate, obviously. I created heirloom presets. Whether you make your own preset, just for you know little things like you always need to do, you always tend to underexpose, so you always wanna bump up your exposure, you know, things like that you can make presets for so that your workflow is faster. So it's not just about the style, but it's about efficiency and doing certain tweaks to all your photos instead of doing it one by one by one. But they will help you create a consistent style once you kind of land on something that you're drawn to. They're obviously gonna speed up your editing, but I would caution you against switching presets all the time. Choosing lots of different presets all the time is just gonna cause a workflow nightmare. It's gonna make people not understand what you do because you keep switching your look. So I would kind of narrow down, you can try different ones, but you can also customize whatever you get to be exactly what you want. When choosing a preset to purchase, you'll want to get a preset that is similar or close-ish to what you are going for with your vision. Like I said, you're going to be able to customize 
presets instead of just thinking, oh, they don't work immediately, they can't get, you know, exactly what I like. Um, sometimes the presets are created using images that are shot a certain way. So, for example, with my heirloom presets, I prefer that you underexpose a little bit so that we can retain highlights and things. So knowing that, it's going to depend on how you shoot. And if you shoot a little bit differently, then the preset might not be initially working how you want it, but that's why we need to customize it. Do try to get as close as you can to what kind of a look you're going for. For example, in my shop, I have Heirloom One collection right now, and it's a light, soft, you know, more film inspired. If you are drawn to really rich, warm, like a moody type thing, that's not gonna be a good preset fit. Even though, yes, we can customize it, it would take a lot of customizing to change the complete style. So find one that is close to what you want and then work with it. Make sure you get a quality preset. These are usually in a $75 to $300 range and they've been tested on lots of different cameras. You'll be able to talk to actual humans to get help or you know, there's a support email access to updates for the files. Also think of it this way. If you shoot 10 weddings even a year, you're spending seven to $30 per wedding on a preset, which is an amazing investment. It really shouldn't be thought of in like one chunk price, but think of it as you're using this tool for every single wedding, just like you're using Lightroom and you're paying for Lightroom every single month. A preset is something that, you know, if you think about it in the same terms, it makes financial uh, sense. Lastly, regarding presets, like I mentioned it before, but just to remind you, don't give up on them too early. I've known people who just buy one immediately that I don't think that it works and then they give up and say it was a waste of money. You need to give it a chance and you need to figure out how to make them work for your shooting style. Step five is the least exciting one. I know nobody likes to talk about it, but it's deciding on your workflow and sticking to it. If you take the time to figure out what your process is from start to end, and then do that every single time, every single shoot, every single wedding, your process, how you edit your photos, how you organize and label, do you pre-edit? How do you deal with multiple cameras? All the process from when you get that group of photos into Lightroom until you export, you need to be doing the same thing every time. Why is this so important? Because if you don't have a repeatable process, you are wasting precious time. Think of it like an assembly line. You'll have these specific tasks, you'll know what is next, you can break it up into multiple days, and when you get to the next day, you'll know where you need to pick up. It's common to get home, get excited, you put your images in there and you pick out your favorite portraits. You send them as a sneak peek and then you don't wanna look at your photos. Then you spend a day and you try to get as much done as you possibly can. You get tired, you get burnt out, then you don't wanna look at the photos again. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. So let's break it up into little daily tasks, keep the same workflow and you'll get done in a wonderful amount of time. At some point, you may want to outsource and hire a private photo editor to edit the bulk of your photos. A good photo editor is going to want you to do a repeatable workflow process so that they can seamlessly integrate into your business. If you can do this now, you're gonna be set up for future time when you're ready to outsource. Okay, let's review the five steps. First, you need to understand light. You need to know all the different lighting situations and how to best capture images in each lighting situation. Don't forget, you need to be using manual. Step two, figure out what styles you're drawn to and start to create your own signature editing style. Three, get familiar with Lightroom and the tools that will actually be helping you. Four is find a preset that will fit your vision pretty closely and then work to customize it. And five, decide on a workflow that you can stick to and that will set you up for outsourcing in the future. If you're excited to learn more about editing, be sure to subscribe and follow along. I will be doing live edits, regular videos, whatever kind of topics you want me to discuss, but I have lots planned, so stay tuned.